Welcome, everybody, to the Table Rush Talk Show. I'm your host, Misha Zvagansov, and today we're diving deep into the world of advertising with Skip Wilson, the mastermind behind Draft Media Partners. Skip has transformed the ad game from guesswork to a precise science. Starting as a teenage copywriter to impress a girl, Skip's journey led him to groundbreaking roles at CNN and iHeartMedia, culminating in the founding of an award-winning ad execution company. Today, he's here to unlock the secrets of achieving real, predictable results in advertising for our listeners. Enjoy this episode. This is my favorite part of your intro. Starting as a teenage copywriter to impress a girl, Skip's journey led him to founding an award-winning advertising execution company. Am I saying that right? Execution company? Exactly. We chose execution specifically, actually, even though it's not the most friendly word in the world to say, but uh, um, we, we chose that just because it kind of differentiates where we stand in the world of, uh, of just different, you know, MarTech companies, as well as ad agencies. We kind of blur the, the lines between those two. And um, our focus is on executing ads, not all the other, not, uh, not, you know, coming up with brand stories and all those things, those are all very important and very valuable, but that's just not what we do. Cool. So you're, and we're talking about social media marketing now, correct? So predominantly like the uh, draft media partners is really built of seven different divisions. Um, draft digital, most of that is social media marketing, et cetera. But I mean, we started out as a SaaS company for like the original idea was Let's create this, like everybody was making guesses. Um, you know, I didn't like how much guesswork went into building plans and, and those things. So the original idea was, hey, we know what a landing page should be converting at. We know what the cost per click on Google for like a roofer should be and, and all these different things. Like, let's just build a tool that allowed someone to say, hey, I want 30 leads and this, and here's my budget and here's my market. And then it sort of spits out the best plan based off of a bunch of different factors. And so that's, that's what we build. That was, that's, a, that's where our draft actually stood. It stands for uh, dynamic response, advertising forecast technology, but that the, after this sort of launching as an ad tech company, um, we realized that, uh, we had so many requests from, from our agency partners, um, because even today, the vast majority of our business is behind other fractional CMOs and other agencies. And because we had so many people be like, can you guys just also do the ads or do this plan? So we started adding in that. And then we made some strategic mergers and acquisitions so that we could have draft direct. So we brought in a direct media company. So things like direct mail and all those things, draft outdoor, draft broadcast. So we've tried to make some strategic acquisitions so that we can be, be able to build a plan strategically using draft ad tech and then execute through our various divisions. Cool. So we're going to talk about not only social media exactly. marketing, but also, hey, how to blend that with some of our more traditional marketing. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, exactly. Fantastic. Anybody watching, listening, go to draftadvertising.com draftadvertising.com and you can follow along and see some of what we're talking about. And I, Absolutely. I wanted to key on something that you said right at the beginning. You said, hey, we're going to we're going to execute your ad strategy. We're not going to develop the, I don't know if you, you, you not develop the marketing per se or, or tell, speak to that again. Yeah, no, absolutely. So most of our you know, when we work with, when we work with a client, what we, what we found was that in the marketplace, there's so many good resources for things like developing brand story and all of those things. But usually if you're working with an agency or somebody who's great at doing that side, they'll have like this beautiful campaign, but then they'll fumble at actually putting the pixels on the page so that they can truly track conversions, you know, and all of that other stuff. So where we realized was that there wasn't enough really, honestly, like nerds in the space. Like there wasn't enough sort of, of those, those more numbery tech people in the space. So that's where we, that's where we sort of saw our, our niche. So, you know, most of the clients we work with directly, if they have an in-house marketing team uh, or even just a person, or if they have established assets and those types of things, we just sort of extend that message and take it to other places. 
And then I said, uh, and then, like I said, today, still the majority of our business is behind other creative agencies that that's, that's their specialty and, um, we're fractional CMOs and things. Cool. One of the questions. So we're the, we're the nerds. We're the nerds in the basements. We're the ones that make sure that you don't just have a great looking campaign, but that it also, um, you know, actually does the thing that you want it to do. It does something. <laughs> yes. That's amazing. There's nothing worse than you'd be surprised how often someone will have like a, you know, not a cheap campaign, but like a 20 grand a month campaign or something like that in, in social media that it's, but they didn't mark that it, you know, location correctly. So it's running to, you know, half the campaigns going to a market that they don't even want to be in or something like that. And so it's, there was just too much, too much of that going on. So we were like, there needs to be a solution for that. That's amazing. And I think your name gave it away when you broke down the name D-R-A-F-T, what it stands for. Yeah. <laughs> your geekiness and nerdiness yeah. shined, shined bright. Right. Exactly. 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 Yeah. And that's, and that's, you know, we, we jokingly say, although it's not really even a joke, like, but even, um, we do have uh, a couple of in-house graphic designers. Cause even though creative is not our specialty, we do have to, we do the AB testing and the building out of different sizes and all of those things. Um, but everyone on our team is, uh, we almost sort of built a company by being behind the scenes. We all sort of joke that like we built this whole company just so we could have an ad agency where we don't really have to meet with people that often. <laughs> That's a, like that. It goes into like our core structure. <laughs> so, so do you do the reporting to the agency who then is reporting to the customer in effect? Yeah, exactly. Sometimes it's white label and then, and, but, and more often than not, we're trying to move to where most folks are, where, are operating on a powered by model, just cause I think it's, I just think it's better. Um, the, where sub, so, but yes, exactly. Whether it's white labeled or not, we provide an actual dashboard so that, uh, either they can see it or them and the client, everybody sort of has their own sort of different things, but, um, but yeah, so that, that so that everything can be tracked in real time, because that's, that's the essential core. I mean, the, the, the idea of advertising as a science, one of our sort of core phrases, um, as a matter of fact, it's on a sticky note right here. And then, um, in our actual office office that nobody ever goes to, cause we're all antisocial, the, <laughs> but in our actual office, it's a, there's a, there's a sign as well, but, um, is marketing is an art, but advertising is a science. Cause it really is, that, that really is true. Like if a, if a Facebook campaign is not getting, let's say, a above a one or 2% click through rate, it's not a good campaign. And so it's, it's a very objective thing. And, and you can take that to any, to any medium, right? Like if a radio campaign isn't getting, you know, 1% of the cum that you're reaching, to actually come to your website, it's not a good campaign. And so those are like very objective standards. And so that's why we put such a focus on tracking things because the idea of a campaign failing, that should never happen. It might fail for like a week or two, but then you make the adjustments, you figure out like, okay, are we getting people to the site, but then the site's not converting? If so, that's where we need to focus on. Are we not getting people to the site to begin with? In which case the ads stink, you know, that's, it's, it's, it's a very like, to me, like a black or white process. Mm, I love that. And it's so powerful. Um, quick, white labeling. So when you say white labeling, the agency is just reselling your services. Well, they're, they're creating the creative. And then, yeah, usually. And, yeah. And then you're helping design A, B test strategies, what have you. And the, yeah. the agency is presenting it as theirs. Right? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the white label model. And, and yeah, you're exactly. Right. Okay. Great. Um, you know, which they're adding value to what we've created and they put their, they put their name on it. And we have, uh, right now we have, um, a hundred and hold on. We have 108 active clients of those, probably about 15 or so, um, work with us directly and only probably about 30 of those even know that we exist. It's so that's so awesome. <laughs> You're like, I am in my happy place. <laughs> it's right. Exactly. So but we are, <laughs> we, we are trying, you know, we are, um, with that though, we are moving out of sort of stealth mode and starting to begin to make a, we don't want to change our business model. I still very much like the idea of working behind partners, but we are trying to you know, start to make a name for ourselves, And that's, so we're transitioning out of stealth mode, um, into, uh, into trying to actually build, build a name brand as well. Love that. 
so powered by, in effect, when someone now is sharing the data that you're providing for them or, or the execution of the strategy at the bottom, it'll say powered by uh, uh, draft media partners, draft media partners. Perfect. So like click funnels, powered by click funnels or what have you, things like Ex that. Exactly. Love it. So I think oh, go. Th that way we don't have to be so careful about, cause white labeling is al always, a, you know, it, it, ta it adds 10 different steps to the process, right? Cause we need to double check every proposal. We need to make sure all the reporting, we need to be careful with automated emails and those types of things. And I love that part of the business, but I think it's, to me, it's, it's unnecessarily messy. So whereas powered by, we don't have to worry about that stuff. They know we exist and we're just in the background. We're still not going to talk to them because we're still antisocial folks. <laughs> it's, it's, but the transparency makes it so powerful. No one's like walking on eggshells a little bit. You're right. Wondering exactly. if they're blowing exactly. it or. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then your agency isn't scared to accidentally say, you know, drop your name yeah. or what have you. So. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So quick, uh, you're starting to uh, come out of, would you say test mode or how did you say it? No. Yes. St stealth, stealth mode. mode. I mean, yeah, exactly. So I figured we've been in, you know, we've been in, we, we're going into our, well, we've into our fourth year actually about to start. So we've been around for three years and, um, but like I said, we've been purely, purely behind the scenes because it, our, we had a pretty big shift in terms of originally being a MarTech company and then, uh, and then realizing that that's actually not the best way because it doesn't truly solve the problem because then they're still going to, it makes them better at planning. They still stink at execution. So we realized, all right, well then we need a more full service offering. And then, so we built, uh, we very much follow, I don't know if you've ever read the pumpkin plan. No, but the idea, the idea of how you build, grow a big pumpkin is, uh, you pull off all the pumpkins on that same vine and just make sure everything's going to that pumpkin and to that one pumpkin. And so that's very much what we spent really the next two years doing was um, making sure that focusing in on our core partners, on our core for referral partners, and just sort of paying attention to where they had a need. And so it's like, oh, they need a direct mail solution. Well, let's go find a direct mail company to, to buy out or purchase, you know, to merge with. Um, and so that's sort of how we built this sort of stack so that we can sort of fulfill no matter which type of advertising platform it is so that we have a solution for it. But now that's all in place. And so we want to grow. I <laughs> love it. You're like, let's do it. We, we are out of stealth mode. Time to go big or yeah. bigger, if you'd like to say. Exactly. Right. And then you can right. hire the, you can hire the customer facing people and still hang out in the background. You're right. Exactly. Exactly. So, exactly. so the, is the podcast strategy just to divert a little bit? Is that part of the, of your podcast guest speaking strategy is I uh, initially assumed it would be to, to hope that an agency hears this, which obviously that would serve an agency if they heard this, but also you're looking yeah. for some direct to consumer opportunities as well. It sounds like. Correct. Yeah, we do. We have, uh, we have staffed, uh, up a little bit to help so that we do have at least now. We have one person, really, one or two people that uh, does enjoy talking to clients. And, is, <laughs> and I say, I hope everyone knows I'm saying that's sort of tongue in cheek, somewhat tongue in cheek. It's more like the rest of us can all talk to clients. We just, we need a drink afterwards, right? Like that. Uh, <laughs> he actually genuinely enjoys it. We got one guy that's like, that's what he, that's what he all lives for. So we are, so we do have a little bit of a direct strategy as well. Um, but the, we always want to be careful though, you know, we're always very careful not to step on the toes of our, of our core business, but, um, but yeah, you know, we, for a fractional CMO out there or for a, an agency out there, if you're the kind of agency that's great at developing a plan or a, a fractional CMO that just has a hard time pulling together reports, we have, um, even for free, like our business center, our, our business center, we don't charge for where it, so you can even just use that to just pull together all your reports and things. Um, so that you have one place you can go to, so you're not having to log into 20 different places to pull data. Um, but then, yeah, we have, we do the, the planning, we can help you get the clients, we can help you do the planning, do the execution. And then of course, if you're any, if you're a, if you're, if you're a direct business, um, we can help you as well. Wow. So you, 
you let's let's go a few minutes on the fractional CMO. You, did I just hear you correct that you said correctly that you said you can help the fractional CMO get business? Yeah, um, that's one of our. Uh, you know, again, it's that whole pumpkin plan strategy of like trying to figure out what do they want and what do they need. And the two biggest problems that fractional CMOs have is one, pull, pulling together those sort of weekend, you know, end of week or end of month uh, reports for them is a nightmare because they have to log into so many different platforms. So we streamed live in that process in our business center. Um, even if it's not a campaign that we're doing, we want to make it so that you can connect it all so that it's still just one place. Um, and then obviously, hopefully we, we hope that you choose us for, to actually do the execution, but even if not, we make it easy. And then, um, but then, yeah, the other piece is giving them tools to be able to, cause to do like a marketing audit or those types of things, you've got to have a spy food paid subscription or a SimRush paid subscription. And you've got to have, you know, there's like 10 or 15 different places that you've got to, you know, like have all these things together to be able to cobble together a report to try to get business. And so we would just have all of that. We put all of that in one place. So that, and that, and that's, and so if you go to draftadvertising.com and you just put your email address in there, we will pull a, what's called a snapshot report for you. Um, we'll pull a, um, which is, we'll give you sort of a, how do you stand in your world? Like within your category, if you're a dentist, we're not comparing you to a hotel chain, you know, and, and vice versa. Where do you stack from like an SEO standpoint, from a paid ad standpoint, from, you know, a broadcast market share standpoint, all of those different things we pull all into one report. So a fractional CMO or an agency could put somebody's URL in there, cobble together a report instantly or super quick, yep. and then use that as a tool to help onboard them or sell them or call it what you will. Exactly. Awesome. The more business they get. It's a win for everybody, right? Like they can use that to get the beating, to get the business. And then we don't have to talk to that customer and they become our customer. I love that. G give me a, a few minutes on like, what is a fractional CMO? How are they different than an agency? Or is it just the same name for a different or the different name for the same thing or? So you, so fractional CMO usually only has usually an individual. Sometimes there are what's called fractional CMO groups, but usually a fractional CMO is a person. And that person is usually only handling less than five actual clients. So rather than, um, so if I'm a, let's say I'm a three market, um, well, since I mentioned roofing earlier, I'll, I'll keep with roofing. Let's say I'm a three market roofing company. I may not be able to afford to have an on staff full-time CMO, and I may not even need that. Uh, because of my messaging is only changing a few times a year and those things. So rather than hiring that full-time employee, I can pay this person a third of what that would cost and get the benefits. Very much like fractional accountants or fractional executive assistants, all of those things. And so that is different than an agency. An agency is usually more of a team of people that you're paying to do usually some sort of either big task or big branding change or something like that. Awesome. I want to dive into what you do. I think everybody can get a sense of how you know the industry inside and out and, and your skill set and your, your geekiness, your geekdom. Yeah, exactly. Um, but one of the questions I had to ask that I was going to ask was how, fa how far along does somebody need to be to be able to take advantage of your services? And I think you've answered that and you can confirm this by saying, hey, you have to have some sort of your messaging dialed in. You need to know, you know, like hopefully have an offer that's converting of some sort or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, if, if for direct, for a direct business, we would not be a great choice if you're a direct business and you've never done advertising before or you don't have a sense of like what your brand identity is or, you don't have what you feel like is a solid um, look and feel and those types of things. There's, we can refer you to some fantastic folks, but that's, that would, you really need to, you don't necessarily have the offer dialed in, but you need to at least not be in that sort of phase one, never done a campaign before all of that. We are putting together a course because we get a decent number of 
uh, as we've started to sort of put our name out there, we're getting a decent number of inquiries. So we are thinking about putting together a course on sort of for that true entry level person on how to do it themselves to sort of start that process. But yeah, for, for a direct business, you need to at least have, if, but probably if you've run ads in the past, you're probably at that, you're probably okay. You've got at least enough stuff for us to be able to say, okay, let me see those stats. Okay. This is where that went wrong. Here's the changes, all of that. Um, and then, uh, but it's the total opposite then for agencies and fractional CMOs for agencies and fractional CMOs. We have made that, I mean, what the comparison I use, do you know what like Cisco foods is or us foods yep. is to like a restaurant? Yep. Let, that's what we delivery. are. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 no. Go, you, that's yeah. The, that's yeah, perfect. Cisco you, foods is delivery. You see their trucks all over the place. So a lot of us are familiar with Cisco systems, the routers, switches, infrastructure, right. But before them, there was Cisco food delivery, right? CY, exactly. CY, CYSCO, I think it is. Anyway, go, go exactly. ahead. Exactly. So, so if I was opening up a restaurant, I would call Cisco Foods or US Foods. And rather than having to go like grocery shopping every week or something like that, they supply all my stuff for me. That's what essentially our same business model is for agencies and fractional CMOs. So it can truly be a starting agency or a somebody who's considering fractional CMOing um, and those types of things. So uh, on the business side, you need to have at least run ads in the past on, um, but yeah, we can, we can help. We don't have minimum budgets or anything and we, c we don't charge retainers or anything. So um, because usually the agencies we're working with, that's where they make money is the retainers. So we can't charge double retainers. Um, so there, there are some, there are some advantages, but uh, for Fractal CMOs and agencies and things, you can be truly a startup. That is awesome. So somebody could literally, literally be listening, watching this right now or hear this clip and go, oh my gosh, I am burned out and my job over here or career over there, or I've been dabbling in this online marketing space and I've, I've wanted to get into the agency slash CMO slash marketing, like help, help coaches do this or help, uh, yeah. you know, um, uh, 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 but what I was thinking on the contractor side, what's the fake grass that the artificial turf, oh, yeah. turf people right, do yeah, that exactly. turf grass, right? You, they, you exactly. can just ramp them up in effect. You could be like, here you go. Like you're, you're ready exactly. to get after it. Let's, let's help execute your dream. Exactly. And that's, and that is very much the sort of, I mean, that's, that's at the heart of everything we're doing is trying to make sure that, uh, um, cause I do think that in business, uh, I, I know the power that owning a business can have and, but I also know the stress and the worry and all of those things. So I'm always very cut, whether it's a client or partner or anybody that we're working with, I'm always big, very cognizant of these are real people with like real lives and this, you know, the success of a business, big or small, even if it's a, you know, like $20 million publicly traded company you know, or whatever, um, those are actual human beings that are impacted by the results of the things you do. So. I um, always try to make sure that uh, we're actually helping these people sort of keep their own personal like dreams and hopes alive. Because I, I do think that business is a great way to sort of help people achieve their dream. You know, you've got a great attitude and a great energy and, a, and, and I would say, um, boy, an inviting, an inviting uh, uh, personality where you're like, hey, let's work, let's get stuff done, but let's understand that errors do happen or there is sort of this human side of things. So it doesn't need to be stressful. This can be fun. Would you say that's an right. accurate assessment? Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's 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 my hope. That's my goal. I mean, that's part of why even when we do a campaign, that whole idea of diagnosing a, a broken campaign or a campaign that's not performing, that's there's nothing that breaks my heart more than someone being like, oh, advertising doesn't work or, oh, you know, we've tried whatever in the past and it doesn't work. Rarely is that the case. It's usually something was off. There was a piece of it that was, bro that's like saying that a, you know, I don't know. That's Essentially advertising is just a getting a specific message to a specific people, right? And so there's no way that getting a specific message to a specific people doesn't work that tactic may have not have worked or that, you know, that thing may not have worked, but, but yeah, I, that whole idea, we call it our draft mindset or draft mentality that everything's in draft mode. That's true in personal life. That's true 
uh, in professional life, you always want to, um, nothing is perfect, uh, but as long as you know where you want it to go, then that's, you just sort of stumble along your way towards that goal. So this is awesome. So this, so your attitude, this, what you bring right here, what you're bringing right here is literally con company culture. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, I hope that that shines through with, uh, with all our team members and with everyone. Cause yeah, that's the, the idea that you have some sort of goal in mind, like that mountaintop that you're trying to get to, but you know that you're not there now. I think that's, that's where people get kind of frustrated or messed up is they don't know either, either they don't know where they're trying to go or they're frustrated that they're not there now. So I <laughs> think as long as we can, you know, that's a, but as long as you recognize, Hey, I'm not, I'm not there yet, but we're heading in that direction. Like I said, in personal life and, and, uh, plus I think part of it's too, I think I've got like that, like young Santa Claus type look, I think it helps, helps lower guard and stuff. There's nobody that's going to be intimidated by like <laughs> meeting me. I don't think. But, uh, mm. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> um, so the, you spoke to someone doesn't know where they want to go, but it's almost like, Hey, we've got budget. We're having some success. We want to scale, but we're not sure where to go. So you're like, Hey, let yeah. us, let us help give you craft that vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause usually businesses will fall into one of two traps. They will either not have success doing something. And so therefore they kind of throw the whole idea the whole baby out with the bathwater type of thing or and, and then they don't know how to change it or how to fix it. So we can come along and figure out this is the point that it's broken. You know, if not your ads, your ads aren't the problem, or maybe they are. Um, but it's not this, that's the problem. Here's the problem. So helping to diagnose problem, you know, what the issue actually is. But then the other side of it, almost equally dangerous is if somebody is getting what they think is a good return. Like we just recently had an e-commerce company that was getting like a 2.8 time return, which is not a bad row as, but there were so many broken things in the campaign that they easily could have been more like seven or eight times that type of thing that they, you know, sometimes success can hide weaknesses as well. Um, and so uh, we, again, just making it more of an objective science, taking it down to here's what it should be. Um, and then here's where it, so it's like, here's that perfect ideal of what this campaign should be. Here's where it is today. And then sort of figuring out like, where is it off of that line? Right. But, uh, is it the ads? Is it this? Is it the that? Also too, we, on the forecasting side, we do forecast out, um, reach and frequency for even digital platforms. And that's kind of a unique thing. Um, cause I, have you, have you done things like how much like broadcast campaigns or anything have you done? Not much. Or do you know? I, I don't. Okay. Yeah, go. Well, so, and don't worry to exp teach. Got it. All right. Well, in the, in like the radio world, for example, you, you run the risk of, uh, like if, if you're a car dealer and you've got, and you're getting success, you can overbuy. And we've all had those car dealers that are just running like every single commercial stop. And you're just like, I hate this car. I never, you know, that same type of thing happens in the digital space. It's just a lot harder to predict. That's called over frequencying and, or getting too much frequency for that platform. And so that's why sometimes it's like, oh, we're killing it on Facebook ads there. That's great. We're getting a gr great return on ad spend. Let's double our spend there. And then sometimes you double your spend and it, the results stay the same or even go down. And that's because all you're doing is actually increasing frequency with that same audience. So making sure that that doesn't happen as well, because sometimes doubling it, sometimes you're not spending enough to where if you double it, you, you can go to the moon and that's fine. But a lot of times doubling it's actually dangerous yeah you know where i see that is on amazon prime football anytime you stream football yeah. they just that oversaturation of the same ad it's like i will never buy farmer's insurance ever <laughs> yeah exactly and places like ott where you've got like a two hour plus uh, t you know tsl or time spent time spent listening or time spent viewing um you run that risk of, unless you have frequency, see that it's, that's a beautiful campaign probably that they spent millions of dollars on probably, but they, they didn't check the box that says cap frequency at X per house. And that little checkbox just wasted a lot of their money. 
And so, <laughs> a- yeah, I and I want to, as we're talking, for everybody watching, listening, I want to highlight that we're talking about running ads, ad campaigns, not only on the social media platforms, but as you said, billboards, radio, things like that. Uh, I'm assuming print as well, traditional print. But the goal is of everything we're talking about here is to be able to serve more customers, serve as a, serve at a higher level, get more leads, grow our business, grow our revenue, grow our profitability. So everything we're talking about is to create that opportunity. Uh, so I want to make sure we keep that. Keep that. Exactly. Yeah, right. So with that in mind, let's talk about A-B testing a little bit. And I think there's a couple of things to talk about there. And what I'm interested to hear, do like what percentage of people don't make it to the testing point where, where, where they don't get it or they're like, yeah, that sounds great. But when it comes to executing an A-B testing strategy, they don't have the stomach for it. Or does that question make sense? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. It's A-B testing, let's say three ish years ago or more is actually probably more than that now because i'm getting old fast i feel like it's it's all of a sudden it just starts happening but <laughs> the um anywhere from three to say uh, 15 years ago and no, i'm just kidding i think three ish years ago a b testing became sort of a buzzword and everyone started working it into a campaign a b testing is good you should do it you should always do it in my opinion um that said though it does require a tolerance for something not working because by definition, you're, you're putting out multiple AB testing is just a fancy way of saying multiple ads. Instead of sending out one ad, you're sending out more than one ad. And then you're tracking results to see which one of those ads does better. And, but by doing that, you have to sort of be comfortable with the fact that at least early on in a campaign, you're not going to meet whatever, like the forecast or prediction of what it could or should be, because you're not even trying to, you're trying to figure out which of these ads is most likely to get me there. So it does take a little bit of a tolerance for that. There is, I mean, we live in a world where you should be able to make it so that none of the ads are horrible, like to where all of them are okay. But you do have to be comfortable with the fact that, like I said, you're not going to get that perfect campaign we just talked about in the first few weeks if you're A-B testing, because that's not even the goal. Your goal is trying to figure out which of these eight creatives is actually good. Mm Mm-hmm. I love that. And that is, cool. in my opinion, in my, I actually almost thought, I thought about writing a whole long treatise about this, actually. But um, in my opinion, market research or marketing research is very flawed. The, the, to me, that is a very waste, very large waste of money. The one of the, I've, I've seen it many times where someone will spend, Six, where a company will spend six figures or more doing surveys and testing and those types of things when they could have run five grand in Facebook ads and gotten that same sort of feedback. And the, the whole idea of doing a bunch of research, it, every company is in a different stage, right? Like if I'm, if I'm someone like HubSpot or Google or someone like that, if I'm a truly a top 100 fortune company, I have too much to lose to not do surveys and those types of things. But unless you're in that space, it's not like you're going to, I mean, you can, you can make sure that it's all brand safe so that you're not saying something that's going to like end you on like, you know, put you in like the headlines in a bad way. But outside of that, it's to me, it, marketing research is a, uh, is a big waste of money because you can just A-B test and get the same sort of results. That's cool. <laughs> that's good. And that's a great perspective. I, that's a great, great perspective, and that's great insight. That opens up, perhaps, for a lot of listeners, watchers, budget for for some Correct. advertising. Yeah, ex- exactly. Well, that's the thing. I mean, there's the number of times. I mean, it's at least once a week that I'm in a meeting where someone is paying for a focus group um, to try to figure out like which verbiage on a, on a postcard is gets the highest response or those types of things. And I'm like, this could have been done in like a two or three day campaign for a hundred bucks. That's <laughs> so the, you know, but it's the, uh, that it's, you know, cause those go all the way back to the sixties where you couldn't get that instant feedback and all of that. And it was very valuable at a time. Now, no, just 
run, run a few different ads, see which one's getting the better clicks. That's your better headline. And there you go. So minimum budget you're hoping for that somebody's got to spend. That's a, such an ambiguous and loose question, but work with me. <laughs> Yeah, no, exactly. exactly. I, uh, so for our, for our SaaS products, um, and so even on a direct business, you know, account or the, those types of things, we do have some tools that will, um, that will help generate backlinks and some of those things that are very self-managed. Uh, so on that end, you're looking at starting at just 150 a month for someone to actually work with one of our teams on the direct business. I mean, because we are sort of priced at wholesale. You're only looking at like a fifteen hundred dollar a month to be to meet our actual true minimum uh, to be a to to be a client of ours, and then for fractional CMOs and agencies, most of what we do is free. We charge you, we make money off of the the clients you bring to us, so we don't charge anything for that. Oh, that's amazing! That's fun. Yeah, that was that was that was a very early on decision that we made when we moved off of the SaaS model onto um, onto that ad execution model. We just realized. Oh, this is a smarter way to make money anyway, because that way no one's has to be worried about using us for fulfillment or anything. There's no risk to using us for fulfillment. And yeah, it puts us in a different space than, uh, than all those other self-serve platforms. So the agency in effect, or the f- fractional CMO is just pricing you into their model and there's not going to be more costs coming. Is that it? Correct. If- good way to say that that's exact that's exactly right some charge retainers some mark up our stuff you know how they do it is 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 different uh is different on their end but but yeah exactly there's no additional fees or costs from us cool and likewise even on the direct business side it's everything that we don't charge uh there's no con- no contracts no retainers everything's month to month because by definition we have to be fluid because we are built to be sort of behind the scenes so I'm not super familiar with the actual execution of Facebook ads and the buying of the media and all that stuff. Are you, yeah. are you, are you, do you have people that are just on the computer, just yep. doing the, that's doing, our, the that's, key, doing the keys? Or, that's our, that's, that's our team. We're, we're, a, you know, uh, for a team of 10, um, we have, you know, a really one true graphic designer. Um, we have, uh, another that um, she's sort of a graphic designer, sort of a, helps build presentations, et cetera. Then the rest of the majority of the team is all focused in on their execution. And then now the one sales guy who does enjoy talking to you. But right. yeah, so it's, we are very staffed up on the execution side much more than, um, than any other, than other, any other piece. Cause that's our, that's the thing we do. We focus on what's called fill, what one of our, if you asked us what we do, um, I would hope anyone on my team would say filtering and fulfillment. We filter, we help filter out what you don't need. Like of all the various options that you could do, here's the two or three you should be doing and then fulfilling that need. So filtering and fulfillment, that's our focus. Amazing. We've been hinting about what you do. I mean, we've been talking all around it, I think. Yeah. So let's, let's give me three, four, five minutes on like, actually, what are you doing? Yeah. So we, we build, essentially we build ad campaigns and then execute ad campaigns. That's it. That, that's it in a nutshell. So if we're, whether it's a direct client or if through an agency, that part doesn't matter. Um, at the end result is what is this business's, what we call dream? You know, what is their dream? What is their budget? If they have one, if they don't have one established, we can help establish that. But what is their goal? What is their budget? Uh, you, who are they trying to reach? Then we build that plan. And then once, once it's approved, we build out whatever creative assets are required for that plan. And then we execute that plan. Cool. And then, so for, for forecasting advertising success before you spend a dime, speak to that. That's our secret planning tool. I mean, that's, that's our, that's our sort of secret sauce in terms of how we're able to generate campaigns one so quickly, but then two, um, we're able to build out multiple plans like, cause all the time you hear someone like, we'll get a, an assignment of like, give us a good, better, best, right? Give us a, what it would be to be, you know, three grand a month, five grand a month and 10 grand a month. Yeah. You know, something like that. And it used to be like before we actually, uh, before our planning tool, you would just sort of have to guess like, 
I, I can probably get a price break at 10 grand and, you know, and all these other different things. Um, what our simulator allows us to do is actually go in and show what the ultimate impact on return on ad spend is by being able to work in different tactics. So for example, um, we have a product called reveal, which is a website de-anonymizer. Um, that's one of our, that's one of our proprietary techs as well. So if someone comes to a website, it will identify who that person is, uh, without them having to click anything, uh, or fill out anything. Uh, we can then fire off a direct mail piece to that person or an email to that person or follow that person, of course, with retargeting ads, that, that part's not special. <laughs> but and then we can also, when, when someone makes a sale, we can do attribution match, match, but we can, but we know that that adds three plus percent conversion to a landing page. So like we can forecast that out. Okay. If you're a dentist office and I'm just making this up because I don't know dentist office conversion pages off my, but, um, but the tool does. So we know if it's a dentist's office, their landing page should convert at say 5%. If we add in reveal, it'll take it to more like 3%. And so we're able to build that into the plan ahead of time so that if someone gives us, so that we're able to truly say like, this is the best possible media mix to achieve as many leads as possible. If that's your goal or sales as possible, if that's your goal, just depends on the client, right? Um, as, as possible, this is the right mix objectively. And here's how much you should get provided everything performs at the 50th percentile. And so then it's just checking the reports and making sure that once that campaign's executing, are we not getting the clicks we promised? Okay. We know the ad needs to be tweaked. Is the landing page not converting it where it is? Okay. We know that the landing page needs, needs to be tweaked. So then it becomes not only our planning tool, but also that becomes the sort of report card that we're constantly referencing back to, to make sure that that campaign is performing as, as promised. That is awesome. And it's made me think of two things. One, oftentimes agencies or, or media buyers or, or, uh, uh, what, what would we call your company? What bucket would we plop that in? That we would be, we would be more similar to like a DSP, honestly, than like an ad agency. Um, so we, but we, we kind of walk that line, which is just sort of funny. We're a full service execution company. Okay. That's why we have to use that word. <laughs> yeah. That's a, well, we're a sort of in between, um, yeah, we're somewhat of an ad agency, somewhat of a MarTech company together. So yeah, ad execution company. MarTech stands for marketing tech. Is that, is that? Yes. Okay, cool. So somebody who's running Facebook ads for you, for example or something like that. Most of you guys are not guaranteeing results. It sounds like your tool gets you about as close to guaranteeing results as one possibly could get. Correct. Yeah, exactly. We're able to say that campaigns in this market, in this category, based off of this budget, should generate this many leads, this many clicks, this many, you know. And we also are very upfront about the fact that because of A-B testing, usually the first two to four weeks, you're not going to match that simulation. And so we always say, month one, you're going to hate us, right? Month one, you're going to be like, who are these people? They're terrible. And, but it doesn't just, it's, you know, because a lot of times you'll hear, oh, you need to let it keep going. That's actually not good advice if you're not changing things. <laughs> just letting it ride, not a good idea. Um, but there is truth in that if you are making tweaks and optimizing things, by about the fifth or sixth mark for digital campaigns, fifth or sixth broadcast and stuff can sometimes take truly closer to 90 days. But um, for most things, for things like social media, you get enough immediate feedback to where within five to six weeks, it should be coming close to the forecast. That is awesome. Or it's not, and we stink, and there's no contracts. Yeah, right? <laughs> Cancel anytime. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who, who are, are, did you wake up one day and you're like, I'm going to code out this tool, this, this tech that you go ahead. So, so I was at, um, I was at, I was the, um, I was brought over to what was clear channel media. This was now, um, gosh, almost two, a decade and a half ago ish. Um, <laughs> the, so a long time ago, um, or no, not, not quite that. I don't know. It was 2010, uh, 2010. I was brought we're over to pushing clear channel a media. We're pushing a decade and a half ago. Already in okay. 2010, which is frightening. <laughs> All right, so, but anyway, yeah, ex exactly. 
But 2010, I was brought over to Clear Channel Radio. They were they were about to launch the um, what was the iHeartRadio app, and with that was a whole push to go into the digital space. And I was the vice president of digital media for that next decade until I left there to to pursue draft. Um, and that whole time, you know, I mean, building out that department and all and all of those things, building out the processes and all of that. I kept, we would always get asked like what I felt like were reasonable questions, right? Like, so you were meeting with a client, the client would go, Hey, if I give you a million dollars a year, what kind of results can I expect? Which seems like a reasonable question. Um, but there was just never a good answer. For that. And the, and because there wasn't one in the industry and that's not a, sl- a slam. It's I, I heard great, but the, <laughs> there, that just didn't exist. And so I sort of began compiling over the course of really my, my career, both before I hired and after had sort of started keeping stats on like conversion rates and all of those things. And then looking at publicly available information to figure out like, okay, what is, what is a dentist's cost per click? What should that be? And, and in 2000, you know, 15, 16, there's a, there's a very dumb way of doing that. Like now we can get very much better, very real stats from, from those types of things. But I had a sort of dumb spreadsheet version of what would become the draft tool for a while because I just, I got tired of not having a good answer for, hey, if you give us a million bucks, um, because before that, it's like, I don't know, you're going to get an invoice. I guarantee you an invoice and we will show a proof of, we will run your ad. (laughs) That's the guarantee. And so I just didn't like that answer. I wanted to be able to at least be able to say, and two, um, one, then I got sort of obsessed with this idea, um, in, in 2020, actually, um, during the shutdown, and all of that, I began sort of getting obsessed with the idea that it should be able to work backwards, right? Like there is a best campaign. Like there is, it, it, obviously you'll have a company that like, you'll have like a roofer that's doing $10 million on TikTok or something like that. But those are, those are outliers for the most part. If you look at the 50th percentile of performances, there is a best campaign for a three market roofer that's looking for leads. And I, I was like, there's no way that we can't, I can't like build something to like do, figure out what that thing is. And so that's what became draft. Amazing. Were you like, uh, you seem pretty young or maybe I'm just feeling old. Um, well, I started at 16. Remember that. Okay. Well, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> so child prodigy, were they like send him off to MIT or something like that? Him being you or. <laughs> no, no, I did. I went to Clemson. Um, the, the, I graduated in two years, uh, but with my bachelor's, but the, but no, I mean, it, no, nothing like that. I mean, I, the, it's actually sort of the opposite. I'm, 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 I'm dyslexic and, uh, and so all, all of those things, but, uh, which makes writing code hilarious by the way. Um, but, but the, uh, also too, I presentations, we have one of the, I'm not allowed to price things myself or do the final draft of presentations because. That was a hundred thousand, not a hundred. Excuse me. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Or, um, or nine hundred thousand and one, not one hundred and nine. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and um, but but no, I mean it was it was I I always was sort of cognizant. Also, too, growing up, my my dad uh, my dad was a business owner and an entrepreneur his whole life. He was he was in commercial real estate, and he his business went under when I was when I was a kid, um, and. The, I saw him go from very, very wealthy, the long story, but I didn't, I didn't, we didn't live in the same house and all that other stuff too much for, too much for this podcast. But I saw how the impact on his life of going from being a very wealthy person in Atlanta to being essentially in a trailer in the middle of nowhere in Georgia. And I think seeing that sort of impact or sort of living through that with him, um, even though it was from a distance a little bit, but whatever, um, I always was very cognizant about the fact that businesses are real people. Like these are even big businesses and stuff. These are real human beings. And so even as a copywriter or uh, when I was doing the freelance copywriter thing at 16, um, the, you know, and going into web design, I always sort of, I don't know, it all, it comes from like having just a deep respect for like the business I'm working with. And I feel like that comes through. And so. I don't know. And then you, when you do have that, you begin to ask, what, like, I'm asking that question just as hard as the client is when they're saying, hey, if I give you a million bucks, what can I get back? I'm like, you know, like I'm, I have that same question. 
And so not having an answer is just, I don't know. So that's, I don't know that that actually answers your question, but that, so no, I would say not a prodigy in terms of, of intelligence or anything, but, um, definitely have a, you know, I recognize how important it all is. You know, I think a good marketing campaign can genuinely change a business's trajectory and, um, it can, it, the bad one can do the exact opposite. And so I, I, I think just recognizing the importance of these things. If I'm a prodigy of anything, that's it. You bring a good bit of empathy to the whole, to the whole thing. And, uh, which is nice and refreshing and many people in, in not to place judgment on it, I guess, guess it's who you like yeah. to work with. Some people are very much, it is about, it's all about the number, close the deal, this, that sort of a sure. thing where Maybe that's not a good analogy, but, but yeah, I, I was thinking you made me. There's a certain amount of like, I used to always hear to, to the way you were about to just say, sorry, should have let you just finish it instead of cutting in. But the, um, the, to that, you we always got a crush number, always push, always push. One of the things that would always bother me was like an acceptable number of attrition, like that we would always have built into our plans, uh, in the corporate world. I won't say specifically, which, cause there's more than one company actually, but the, would always be like, oh, we're going to experience, you know, 30 to 40% attrition, which is a lot. And that to me is like baking into the system that we're going to take, like get bad results for a significant portion of our customers. Right. Yeah. I was thinking, not having a real sense of that. Yeah. I was thinking of the movie air. I don't know if you've seen that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And they did a great job of, of balancing you know, the, the urge to close Michael Jordan and, and have him come to Nike with the, the head of marketing and the head of basketball marketing. who's like, look, man, right. like, I'm divorced. I'm just, I'm just trying to get my daughter some tennis shoes, you, you know, right. and like, uh, exactly. Yeah. Um, so how to get real results. I'm going to blend two questions in here, how to get real results from yeah. advertising. And you've spoken to the loud, that a little bit, but I want to make sure you get to speak to that directly. And then maybe some case studies with that. And then I have another question for you, uh, but let's start there. So good cocktail number. Quite, so first of all, my secret to success in any ad campaign, like, especially if you're doing it yourself. Um, so we you know, to the business owners doing themselves or even, or even the CMOs and to, if you're doing ac actually executing campaigns out there, some things I would caution on is don't overthink the plan. You want to spend a good time thinking about who you're talking to and what they would want to hear to do that next step. But usually once you start a campaign, you're able to get much better feedback than you ever could. It goes back to that whole market research thing. I would go ahead and I would, I would start with not, not you know, not enough to, I would never, I would never go into debt for an advent campaign, but, um, that's not a good strategy. Nobody should do that. Um, the, uh, but start a campaign and start to tweak those results based off of that feedback. And that feedback is, um, in social media world, just cocktail napkin numbers. One, you should be getting at least a 1% click through rate in Google ads or Facebook. And every industry is a little different, but a good rule of thumb. You should be getting a 1% click through rate. You should be converting about 5% of the traffic to your landing page. So do those calculations in your business to see if that makes sense. And, um, if not, you may want to, you may, you may need to sort of tweak your offer, tweak your, uh, tweak what you're doing, but that is a good rule of thumb because a lot of times, I mean, sometimes I'm reading with somebody is doing their own ad campaign and it's actually doing fine but they don't realize that it's doing fine because they're, they're expecting that if they spend a hundred bucks, they're going to get, you know, three or 400 people to their website or, or whatever. Um, but that's rarely the case. Um, also to take advantage of free tools like Google analytics, Microsoft clarity is a good one too. Um, if you're getting low time on site, if it's less than 30 seconds, you're probably getting a lot of junk traffic. If it's, so in other words, you're reaching a bad audience. I would probably focus on the audience. If it's more than 30 seconds, but you're just not getting leads, then you've got a crappy website or a crappy landing page to use a technical term. <laughs> and, and in that case, uh, you know, like I said, clarity is free and it, it does heat mapping and stuff. Uh, so figure out what they don't like on your page. Um, do those things and you'll have a, and you'll have a successful campaign. 
awesome. I was going to say landing page optimization, but you have got a crappy landing page. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, if they're if if they're spending you know more than thirty seconds, that's not like bots and stuff. You just have a bad site, and uh, or a non-converting site. Not bad. Just it's not doing its job. So, the but and the other the other big mistake I would say that I see businesses make all the time when they are doing their own ads is selling in the ad. You're never trying to you know this goes all the way back to David Ogilvy. To, um, but the job of an ad is to get them to do the next thing, right? Um, he said the job of a headline is to get them to read the next sentence, but to paraphrase a little bit, that Facebook ads job is to get them to do whatever the next thing is, whether it's a landing page or whatever, the Facebook ads job is not to sell your product because you can't do that. You've got three seconds or so with that ad. So very rarely can a, can a product be sold in three seconds. So that job is to, for it to basically be like, Hey, Hey, click this because of this. That's the job, the ads only job. Then the job of the landing page is to truly make that sale or make that, um, make that next conversion. And also to keep in mind that getting someone's contact information has a perceived value of about 50 bucks to them. In other words, what I'm getting in return has to be worth 50 bucks in my opinion, for me to give you a contact information. So just keep that in mind. Those are two amazing nuggets right there. Thank you for that. Yeah, no, that's. All the time we'll get, we'll get clients that are like, oh, you know, all we're doing is asking for their contact information for this, like, you know, they, whatever it is, like something that has essentially no value whatsoever. I'm like, well, right. But that, that to them as a, as a, you know, they don't realize that that as to them a $50 ish purchase. So. So my freebie to get somebody's email, the person that's going to give me their email needs to look at that and go, that's where I'd pay $50 for that. Correct. Consciously, yeah, exactly. it doesn't consciously. Yeah, exactly. Now, you know, that's not a literal, you know, not exactly. They're not consciously thinking that, but th that's the level of value it has to have in their mind for them to be like, sure, I'll get this random company's spam. Why not? And, um, and then of course you don't, do, you don't send them spam, you send them good content and all of that stuff. Right. But that's to them, you get that whole empathy thing, right? Like you gotta put your, my, your, your, the, in their seat, in their seat, it's going to be like, worst case scenario, I'll have to block this email address. You know, <laughs> what would they be willing to, <laughs> to give up? I will opt into the worst case scenario. Subconsciously. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I want that thing that bad. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> was it going to say, oh, do you help with the. Uh, uncrap and <laughs> turning somebody's landing page uncrappy. Yeah, th that's part. I mean, that's, that's why we focus so hard on being a truly a turnkey solution and what I call solution agno agnostic. Um, so that, so, because yeah, in my opinion, that's, that's as the landing page conversion piece of it is just as much the ad execution company's job as, as anything else, because that's, no one is paying for it. Nobody wants ads. Like nobody cares about ads. Nobody's going to bed tonight thinking like, oh man, I hope I have ads tomorrow. What they care about is sales and leads. So because that's actually what they're buying when someone buys something from us. Yes, we do the landing page optimization part of it as well. Cause like I said, that's really what they're buying. Nobody's buying ads. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for that. You spoke to, uh, a lot of brick and mortar contractor type people type people or dentists or what I would say are traditional, traditional businesses. You also spoke to a client that you have or had that was an e-commerce correct person. Are, are, are you very niche driven or are you like, no man, uh, info products, come on in. Uh, uh, you know, um, uh, what am I like membership site continuity continuity is all the rage these days right or right yeah, go ahead answer that question yeah yeah so internally we are like internally each person sort of has their own like division and those types of things but no I mean keep in mind that our with our business model going back to the whole 108 active clients right now um most of the partners we're working with like one of our biggest referral partners is a real estate agent is a real estate agency where they their whole focus is working with realtors and real estate companies right they have a niche um, but we can't because we are working with them. And then we're also working with an automotive focused ad agency. And so as far as, so no, we are niche agnostic. Um, there are some 
categories that we have a ton of research and data from in our simulator of what like from our own campaigns and then sometimes we're having to rely on national on national statistics and data but um but so yeah that's we for the most part we do, especially if it's e-commerce or lead gen if you're trying to sell something or get leads we have a lot of experience in that and then we also do have some state campaigns that are just purely awareness as well but those are easy and no business cares about awareness campaigns so Unless you have a lot of money, man. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, exactly. <laughs> unless exactly. you're like, unless, what the the car companies? So they're just trying to confirm the fact that you s will sleep good at night that you bought the Toyota, right? Yeah, like, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a, well, any exactly. any favorite? I mean, I get a sense, and it's very clear to me that you know what you're doing, that you are helping people, that you're bringing tremendous value. As we've gone and talked to. But I'm going to give you an opportunity to talk to any favorite customer success stories, like you, you like the ad campaigns that have that have transformed a company. You said that the right ad campaign can can change your life. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, we have. I mean, so on our website, we do have the sort of bottom of the homepage. We have several several case studies there. Um, the reality is is one case studies are very predictable. I mean, that's another one of those things that. Um, the idea of marketing being objective, uh, it, it, it just is, we know that if we make the right tweaks and the right changes, we should be able to generate X amount of results. And so we can usually predict, yeah, this is on track to be one of our great successes or, or whatever. Um, so all of that to say the, but yes, the biggest thing that I think I get a kick out of is we've done some is recruitment campaigns, recruitment campaigns. A lot of people don't think of recruitment as marketing, um, but there are several case studies in that. And the thing I like about recruitment campaigns is it's like m good on so many different levels, right? You're helping someone get a job. You're also helping someone get, you're also helping this business with a big problem that they're having. And, um, and it, there's just a lot less competition in that space. So, you know, you can get, Rarely can you get somebody, you know, so for example, one of our, you know, one of our, um, best direct clients is, uh, is a, is a healthcare system. Um, and for them, they, you know, we can get like, we can get a doctor for them for like 120 bucks and that doctor to them is worth millions of dollars in revenue. Rarely can you have like a true, like thousand X ROAS. Um, so that's one of the reasons I like recruitment campaigns as well. Wow. So. I, I just happen to be going to a bunch of networking events and there's a ton of recruiters running around and there's companies at these events wanting to hire people. So if I'm hearing you correctly, recruiters that know their market should be reaching out to you. Is that what I'm literally hearing you say? I, yeah. Rec yeah. Recruiting is very much a marketing problem. I mean, it is, it's that whole a specific message to a specific audience to achieve a specific result and recruitment is no different than that and so we can help build that campaign as well so yeah that's those are those are some of my favorite case studies and then we do we've done some uh, some work with like the north carolina anti-smoking commission some of those things as well too that are that are just nice from a um, from what it achieved you feel campaign. good headhunters yeah, exactly. so i want to go back to this recruitment campaigns headhunters yeah. uh, would a headhunter be served by running a recruitment campaign? Yeah. Um, I would think that they, what I would suggest to a headhunter is actually there's two ways to do it. One, they could run the, the ad campaign themselves. The problem with that is that then they, then they have the risk on themselves. What I think a smarter play if I was a headhunter would be, would be to work in like some standard marketing packages as part of my offering. And then we would do the execution of that, of course. Um, but and essentially turn myself from just a headhunter to a recruitment agency of one person or two people. Wow. There's so many recruiters out there. I'm just, I'm just hearing what you're saying. And I was in sales. I made so many telemarketing phone calls, flyer campaigns. Yeah. That's, that's my history, right? Like millions of hand dialed phone calls to then auto dialers and telemarketing teams and all that, which I love. Right. I love sales. I love all that. And I'm just, yeah. And so I'm thinking about the recruiters that are 
hammering out invites on LinkedIn, dialing for dollars, smiling and dialing, which I love. But I'm thinking, oh my, go go ahead. Yeah, by working in something like an ad campaign as and making that as a part of your services and packages. One, you're putting the risk on your customers to yourself, which is, you know, just sort of a nice transference for them. And then, um, but it's not, again, we do all the things to mitigate that risk because of the forecasting, all that stuff. But I didn't want that to sound nefarious. That's a good thing. It's just, it is what it is. If you're a one person recruiter, you can probably afford to lose less money than like a 30 location hospital system, right? Um, and, uh, so you want the risk on them instead of on you, but then also, yeah, you, it gives you to your point, it gives you a hook that you can throw into a cold email or cold reach out that just makes you different than the other headhunters. Wow. And I'm, and if you're able to, to convert and, and serve your client that, that you, you get a company that's like, yes, please recruit some people for me. And then you're able to recruit faster, better, more efficient, cleaner. I don't know, however you want to say it. Like, wow. Exactly. And you get a whole nother revenue stream because also too, on the, um, not only do you think you get a revenue stream because you can mark up our services and all that stuff, but also, um, or, or charge rotator, you know, like I said, whatever works with that within their system. But also, uh, you're probably like, if I'm just to use that healthcare example, uh, if I'm not going to hire, I might hire a head hunter to find that doctor or department head, right? I'm not going to hire a head hunter to find the 30 people in, um, food service or janitorial work. But when it becomes an automated campaign, if I'm that recruiter, then I can say, Hey, and you can keep this campaign going for those, for those jobs that you're always turning because they're always hiring for the janitorial work. You can keep that going in perpetuity. And it just becomes part of like, that's, you know, for them mailbox money, right? Cause then they're tagged in to be more hands-on for those doctors and department heads, but for those quick turn, uh, positions, they can just that can just be their normal ad campaign that's always running. I know you'd said in a perfect world, non-agency customers. So would we consider a recruiter or a non-agency partner? Non-agency partners need to have an idea of, uh, I loved how you said it, uh, brand identity, their brand story, those sorts of things. A recruiter, on the other hand, that hears this, or I go, I tell my recruit recruiter buddies who I'm meeting and having Zoom yeah. calls with, I say, you know what? I, you need to talk to, you, you know, you need to talk to Skip. It's like, yeah, they would, they would be an agency essentially at that point. And we would just hook them up as an, as if they were, and, and you know, we wouldn't call them that we'd call them something else, but it's that same business model of, we would hook them up at the business center. They would have access to request proposals and all of, and all of those things. Um, and so, yeah, to them, it would be because that essentially is just a niche focused ad agency right it's it's just a hiring yeah. focused ad agency well you said return on roi man you're like that that's where the sweet spot of roi is in the, in, yeah. in, in, in the online marketing world right now you just said right. where the sweet spot is and i heard that and so i'm sorry to keep leaning into that but i'm like oh no, my gosh good. like that's incredible I, that's well thank you Thank you. Yeah. I mean, that's to me, that's a much easier, better thing than for a headhunter to have to now also pay for like a two grand a month ad campaign or something like that. No, let the client pay for that. Yeah. And then you can focus on other stuff. You can keep doing your thing for the big club, for the, for the big positions. So. Awesome. Again, everybody draft advertising.com draft advertising.com. You said there's a tool where they can drop in their email uh, and get, yep. or, or the URL and get the get that report? Where, 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 where are they finding that? So right, right on the homepage, just enter in your, uh, just throw your email into that, uh, into that search bar. And then we will, um, we will reach out to you to generate that snapshot report. We, all we need from you is yeah, the URL of the company. There's also a, the, we've got our AI chatbot too on the, on the, oh, yeah. on there. So again, we designed everything so that we don't have to talk to folks as much as po- like as, as little as possible. Right. So you can also, you can also through that chat bot, just throw your URL or, uh, or email address or anything in that. And we can, uh, so either the chat bot or that search form and you'll get, you'll get the, the, uh, the audit from us. Cool. And is that, you the, can, go ahead. What? Sorry. No, I was going to say, you can also just re- email, email us too. Um, you can email us at, at info at draft, at draftmediapartners.com or draftadvertising.com. Uh, either of those info at draftmediapartners.com and we can get in, we can work that way as well. 
Fantastic. So the box that says request a free consultation, someone drops in their email, sends it to you. You're going to say, hey, give me your URL, and then you're going to give them the report. Yep. Amazing. Exactly. I want to make sure that you've got to talk every uh, t talk or hit on or speak to everything you wanted to speak to. We're sort of leaning into a little bit longer than perhaps uh, oh, yeah. unusual, Sorry. which I love. I knew it would. I knew it was going to go this way. Uh, and this is awesome. <laughs> you've just, boy, I opened my eyes to so many things. Um, but I hit stop yeah. and you go, oh, I wished I'd have said. Is there anything that you... you no, other than um, don't be just because you maybe if you don't match those boxes that I mentioned, don't be afraid not to reach out even just with questions because it it may be a week or so before I respond to some of those. But the um, but always feel free to reach out. Hopefully, if hopefully if nothing else, uh, the the listener you know, you listener knows that um, that I care and want to help, and so you know, feel free to reach out even if you're like. Just got like a business idea, not even a full business yet. We may not be able to work with you on the agency side, but I'll at least answer some questions. This has been awesome and amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Hable Rush Talk Show. For resources to help you sell your stuff, go to B-E-L-O-V-E dot media forward slash resources. That's B-Love dot media forward slash resources and be sure to subscribe comment five star and share thank you again for listening